So we're going to look at routing in React JS. How to route from one page to the other, how to move from one page to the other. You know, in the very first class, I explained to us that there's just one HTML page in our app. This. And I explained that what we are going to be doing in the React is to change the content of this div. So what we want to do is the way uh, we want to look at how to route. The way you route here is a bit different from the way you route in traditional uh, web apps because this is single page application. So uh, in in traditional web apps, when you want to move from one page to another, you use your anchor tag and you put the the name of the next file you want to go to. Let's say if I want to go from index.html to about.html, all I need to do is to put my anchor tag, then use my href to put to add the about.html. But then in this case, there is no about.html. We only have just this index.html file. Just this HTML file. So when you move from the index page, from the landing page to the about page, all you want to do is to change the content of this div to another page, meaning that we only have just this single file loading different pages to user. The user thinks uh, he or she is moving from one page to another page, right? But uh, a typical SPA, single page application, you are just on a single page and you are changing the content of this div. Do we understand? Yes. Okay. Now, to route in uh, React.js, we bring in a library called React Router DOM. So let's download it. Let's install it. npm install React Router DOM. So we've, we've imported the React Router DOM. Let's go to our, let's go to this index.js file. Now, uh, we are going to bring in something from that React Router DOM called Browser Router. Browser Router. We want to do routing on a web app, like on a, on a web browser like this. Browser Router allows you to route on a web browser because we are using this. Of course, this is React, uh, not React Native. This is React. So because we want to do route, uh, routing on a web browser, we bring in Browser Router. So we come here, we bring in Browser Router. Import. Browser router from React Router. Down. So we are bringing in Browser Router from the library we just installed. Now, all components wrapped with this Browser Router, we permit routing. I can't again. All components that you wrap with this Browser Router, we permit routing. But components that are outside of this browser router will not permit routing. Meaning that you will not be able to use, you will not be able to route on this component. So one thing you can do is you can wrap your whole application with the browser router. By wrapping your own application with the browser router, that means you can do routing in any of your components. So what I would do is this, I'll say, Browser router, then I'll do this like this. So by wrapping this app component, you know all our files, all our all other components, you bring them to this app.js. All all other components meet here. So by wrapping this app component, 
with your browser out here, what you are doing is you are saying that I want all my components to permit Pauten. You'll be able to use Pauten there. Any questions so far? Can we proceed? Sorry, I have a question. Okay. So, so um, I could see briefly make use of the I can't tell you again. Ah, your line is breaking. Is yeah, it? Trump. You really need to before I can't we can tell. actually make you that question. No, I think that's your question. The line is broken. Okay, so what I, so what I'm saying is Let me be sure. Please others, can you hear me? Before you actually I see you did MP MPM Hello? I I can hear yes. you now. Hello? Okay. I can hear both of you clearly. Okay. Okay, so can you hear me clearly now? Yes, I can now. I can. What about now? Yes, okay, I can sorry, hear. sorry. Sorry. Before the mask. Before we make use of the React router. Something npm install React uh, router. Yeah. So my question is do we necessarily need to do that always? before we could actually make use of the React router. Because what I was thinking initially is that you are just going to import it from the, the React dom. I was the only import you are going to, to do. Uh, routing is not inbuilt in React, like it's not part of the you React. Okay, yes, I got your question. Routing is not inbuilt in React. Right, and that's why we need the standard okay. library for okay. that. This package, React Outer DOM, is, oh. is used for our Okay, team. okay. Yeah. It's not part of basic React. So, uh, that's why we got in this. Oh, okay, okay. I got Now, after importing this, please, any other questions before we move on? Please, can we hear me? Any other question? Okay, in no sense of question, let's move on. So after beginning your browser router, now you can route in any of your components. So what I will do here is that I will, I will do some basic routing here. Sorry. So I will do some basic routing here. So to route, you bring in something called route. Still from the same package, react, uh, react router dom. I'm coming. Oops. Let me import it manually again. Let's import it manually. Import routes. We also need routes. So we are putting these two things. Let's discuss what we need these two things for. Why we need these two things. So let's use this one first. Routes. Routes. Then the part you want to route to. That is when I go to the landing page. I want to load this code. B. How high? Open. What this means is when I go to this part, this part means uh, the landing page, then I want to load the codes here. Let's move on. Routes. Routes. 
when I go to a route page, that I, when I go to slash a route, I want to load the code here. Please, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I hear you. Just try that. This is a uh, route page. So when I go to landing page, I will load this. When I go to this, I will load this. But you see these routes, this route and this route, they need, they need to be children of routes. That is, they need to be routes with uh, routes. So we can now cut this and uh, bring them into this route. So let's go to the browser and see if everything is working fine. So we can see how are you doing because that's the landing page. If I go to slash about, this is about page. Let's move on. Any questions so far? So you may you may be asking that oh. Are we going to put all our codes here? Because presently it seems so. It seems so. When we we put when we go to this slash, we said we want to load these codes. When we go to slash about, we want to load these codes. So instead of putting this here, you can put a component here, and that's what you are going to do. Instead of putting this D, because of course we have many lines of codes that you want to display, maybe on the landing page, and you may even want to style it and all. Instead of putting this div like this, we can create a component. We can call it, let's go to the components folder. Or let me create a folder and call it pages. Call it pages. Then inside the pages, you can say landing page. Landing page. Dot, uh, dot, uh, JS. And then, that's fine. Then return. Uh, this is the landing page of the app. So let's take the about page also. So instead of displaying this, how are you doing? I'll bring in the landing. So instead of displaying this, I'll bring in the about. Everything is still working fine. Okay, it's still working well. But then, uh, you you might observe something that whenever I need to go to any of these pages, I need to come here to the browser like this, then go there. You might have observed that. So what we are going to do is instead of, of course, you won't expect your users to always come here to move from one page to another page. You won't, you won't want that for your users. So you want to make something like an anchor tag, something that they can easily click on. Then 
it will allow them to move from one page to another page. So let's first bring in anchor tag. Now, when I go to the home, it will move to the home page. When I go to the about page, it's on the about page. Any question before we continue? Okay, in absence of question, let's move on. Now, if you observe something as you as by using this anchor tag, notice this. Okay, yeah, just notice this thing here, this icon. When I move from one page to another page, you observe that this loads. All right. When I go to this, this loads. What is happening there is that it keeps going to the server to load this page, and that's what anchor tag does for you. That is what anchor tag does for you. It goes to the server to load it. Now that that may not be cool for your application, especially when the person doesn't have good network. These things are not fetched from backend. They are all at the front end, and in fact, the act has already fetched them initially, all right? So there is no point this going to the server to load it again. There is no point. So instead of using this anchor tag, you can use link. Link. Let's begin link. Link. So this, we replace this anchor tag. So I will remove this. Put home. Into let's do this. So let's see how this works. Notice the just notice this in place. When I go to about page, do you observe that this is not loading? So when the net even if the network is not good, you will still be able to load these pages. All right. Do you understand? It makes the routing smooth. Are you are you following me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. I got the solar. Um, please, um, what's the difference between that link and the anchor tag? Okay. The anchor tag fetches it from the server each time. Okay. The anchor tag fetches each page from the server each time. Why this link does not fetch it from the server? In fact, uh, when you visit a React app, remember I told you that in React is a single page application. Right? When you get there the first time, React preloads all components. It loads everything the first time. So you don't need to, after, after you visit the page the first time, you don't need to always visit the server to load your pages. There you go. Let me use an example. Let's go to this website. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. 
So let's go to this website. These are for my startup. Now, when you visit this website, even if you put off your data after visiting it, you can still go to the How It Works page. You can still visit. Okay, this is this is sub this is sub domain. This is sub domain. But all of this, this okay, this also is sub domain. But this How It Works page and the home page. They they are done with link. If it has to be anchor tag, you will all if you always need to load. That is even if you put if you put off your data, if, if you are not connected to the internet, you won't be able to visit this how it works page. Do you get it? Because anchor tag always needs to go to the server to load those pages. Why the link does not need to? We have to have fetched everything the first time. So you don't need to always go to the server to load these pages. I hope you understand the explanation. Yes, yes, thank you very You're much. Yeah. Okay, so we've seen this too. Let's add the not found page. That is, in case someone just goes to any other page. Yes. In case someone goes to any page. Let's say contact page. You have this. It's but nothing there. The reason you have this here is because this nav nava is not within this route. It's not within. So all your components you have this. All your components. So what you want to do is if I go to a page that does not exist, I want to display a not found page. A not found page. So let's get the not found page together. So you can style this and make this page beautiful. Notice this aesthetic. So what happens is that when you go to a component that is, uh, when you go to a route, a URL that is not among any of these ones, then it will load. It will always load this not found. That is why this is aesthetic. You can style it, make it beautiful and all. So let's visit the contact page now. You see. It seems you are lost. But I go, try to go, go to, let's say, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It seems you are lost. So this is how to handle the not fan page. I think that's, we also have something like that there. So this is a not fan that we designed for this. Okay, let's proceed. This navbar, well, it's, it's a common practice that you create a component for it and just put it there. So let's do that together.
So I'll cut this from this place. I'll cut this from there. Then, then this. Okay. So we still get the same results just like before. But note, the reason we can do all of these things here is because of this browser router. Routing our whole app is wrapping, is wrapping everything here. So let, next is we want to look at what we call route parameters. Route parameters. And uh, I'll, I'll discuss why this is necessary, why you need to learn those parameters. Uh, let's see. Let's say I want to, in my app, I have Tai, I have Ken, I have Ido. If I want to contact Tai, I can do something like this. Then maybe I put a component, but I don't want to create a component, so I'll just put a div here like this. Um, contact and Then I will copy this for Kenny. And that's our home. I'll copy this for the So if I go to slash contact slash tie, it will load the slash contact slash can, it will load the slash contact slash it will load this. So let's go to the browser and see if it's working fine. Now we have this working fine. In fact, a lot of applications, a lot of virtually all apps, they use this concept. Let me give an example. I'll go to Instagram.com. Instagram.com slash your username. It will load your page. If I go to another person's username, it will load the person's page. It's still the same concept, right? That is, when you go to URL, you add a username, then it will load that person's information. URL, the person's username, it will load the person's information. URL, the person's username, it will load the person's information. Please, are we getting it? Or do we get what I'm explaining? Yes. Okay. So yes, this, yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So a lot of applications use this. We also use it on Medile slash your username. This slash user slash your user name. If you load your information there. 
Now, but then you may you may now start to ask me that does that mean that they created a URL for each user like this? Because that is what it seems now. You know, if I want to go to Tayes page, I will say slash contact slash Taye. If I want to go to Kenny's page, I will say slash contact slash Kenny. If I want to go to the Who's page, I will say slash contact slash Ido. So if my application has a billion users, do I need to say slash contact slash each of the users till I get to a billion users? All right, you know that is not sustainable. It doesn't look, it doesn't, it doesn't sound sense making, right? It doesn't sound sense making. So what you are going to do instead is this. We are going to bring in something we call, or we are, we are going to do this, or there's a concept called route parameter. And this is how it works. When you go to a URL, in this case, slash contact slash tie, so instead of this being static, we will now say this tie, we want it to be dynamic. That is, it must be, it must be something that can change the radius. Instead of this being slash tie, we will now put a variable here like this. can be name, it can be anything, whatever you want it to be, it can be anything. So, this will now be slash contact slash, this colon tells React that this is more or less a variable, let me put it like that, a variable. So if I go to slash contact slash tie, that tie becomes name. If I go to slash contact slash Kenny, that Kenny becomes name. If I go to slash contact slash Ido, that Ido becomes name. Do we understand? If this colon is not there, this yes. becomes a static. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. If the colon is not there, this will be a static URL. That it is, must be this exactly. I need to go to slash contact slash name. But by putting a colon here, I'm telling React that this is not a static value. This is a dynamic value. So whatever comes in will be assigned to this name. So what we will now do is this. I will remove this two. Then I'll come here and put colon name or it can be user name, whatever you want it to be. And what you are saying is that uh, this user name uh, will be whatever the user puts at the front, right? So if I go to slash contact slash ido, you can see it's loading this. Normally, based on what you've learned before, this should give you not fun because here, there's nothing called Ido. Uh, I mean, if I remove this now, we have a not found page. Yeah, it's loading our not found page because there's nothing called slash contact slash Ido. I need to go to, it needs to be username before it can load it needs to be username. But by putting a colon here, so whatever you put at the end of contact slash contact slash whatsoever, That data becomes the username, right? So let's see how to extract that username. So what we do is we create a component for this. Instead of putting this here, we create a component. So let's do that together. Uh, this. So we've exported this, let's bring it in. So for all of them, it will always do this contacts page. So let's now see 
how to extract that username from inside this page. When you get a all of them, it will always load to this page. But let's see how to extract that username here. We bring in something called use params. Use params is also is a React hook, but it's inside the React router DOM. Use params. Okay, React router. React router is one of the dependencies of React router DOM. React Router is one of the dependencies of React Router DOM. That is, whenever you install React Router DOM, React Router DOM itself will install React Router for you. So we are bringing in something called these parallels. And uh, like I told you in our previous classes, React hooks, they are basically functions. So you trigger it. And you can save it as a variable. Let's just say, for a start, I'll say, OBJ equals to this. So when you call on this function, it will assign all the params inside this OBJ. What are params? These variables that you set here. They are params. This username is a param. You can add another one again. You can set ID. This is a param. This is another param. So when you go to a URL, all the params will be inside this will be inside this OBJ. It's not even to call it OBJ, you can call it whatever you want. But this returns a this returns an object. When you call on this function like this, it returns an object. That object contains all your params. So let's say console of OBJ so that we we'll see how it looks like. So instead of this, this now becomes, we can put an ID. Remember, here, we wrote, slash username, slash ID. So this is dynamic, this is also dynamic. I'll go to my console to see what they have there. It has an ID and the user name. So you can extract this and this, then make it display it on your page. You can extract it too. So let's extract this too. This, if you are lost, kindly signify. Are we following you? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So we have this, you can now say, uh, this is the contact page for, I can say, obj dot uh, username. The ID is, uh, the ID is uh, obj dot ID. So if I come here and I go to another user, let's say tire slash three, I have this. This is the contact is for tire, the ID is If I go to tiny slash, let's say the ID is eight, we have this. But then I think there is a little problem. The problem is that if I just go to slash tiny without the ID, it will tell me I'm lost. I'm lost. So I may you may choose. It depends on how your application is. This this may be you know, this may be a good feature for your app or a bad feature depending on how you want your app to be right. So maybe you want this scanning to be optional. You want to be optional. So uh, what or the ID? So you want the ID to be optional. That is, you can go to slash. Contact slash Kenny. You don't need to put the ID. So if you can come here and uh, do this. By putting this question mark, you are saying that it's not a must for users to add this ID. It's not a must. 
if you also want this to be optional, you can add this. It's not a must. So with this now, if I just go to slash contacts, it will load this contacts page for me. Just by going to slash contacts. Of course, you can't fetch the username and the ID because there's no username and there's no ID. Like I said, it depends on how you want your application to run. It depends on how you want it to run. So now I can I can also go to slash maybe the username alone. Let's say probably. And if I also add the ID, it will still work fine. Everything is working fine now. Any question? But if these ones are not there, if I just go to ordinary slash contacts, it's not it's it's will load the not found page. Not found. Any question? Do you all understand how this uh out parameter works? Yes, for me. Okay. Now, uh, we are running out of time. Now, assignments. These are assignments. Let's go to our, our favorite website, JSON Play Server. So this 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 URL is for each of the photos. You can see you have the photo, this photo here like this. Now what you want to do for me is that in your in your uh the act app there will be here like this inside your nav now there will be linked to about just five photos just five of them slash if i go to slash photos there will be slash photos slash one slash photos sometimes it's not too much i just make it three slash photos slash three you have this. So if I go to slash photo slash one, it will load this uh, this first. Look at the ID. The, the ID here is one. It will load this for me and the title. The title will be beneath that photo. Is it beneath? Yeah, should we make it beneath or at the top? Put it at the top. The title of the photo will be at the top, then the photo will be underneath it. If I go to slash photo slash two, the title will be at the top, then this will be the photo will be underneath the slash photo slash three. This will be at the top and this will be underneath it. Do you get it? Now, not yet done. This will just be three that will be inside this link tag. I come again. Link this three will be inside link. But in case I don't want to load any of the photos because the photos here are much. How many photos do we have there? Uh, let me just check them. Good, we have 5,000 photos. 5,000. So I may want to check the 200 photo. So that becomes slash photos slash 200. Now, only three will be in your nav bar like this. I will be in your link, just three. But again, I may still go to the... I may I still make it possible for me to come to your browser like this. Go to slash photos, slash 200, and it will load the 200 photo. Do you get it? Still make it possible. Three will be inside your link like this. 
check first photo, check second photo, check third photo. When I click on any of them, if I click on the first one, it will load the first photo. If I click on the second one, it will load the second photo. If I click on the third one, it will load the third photo for me. Now, but in case I still want to check more, still make it possible for me to come here, go to slash photos, slash, I'll put the ID of the photo I want to check, and it will load that particular photo for me also. Then, of course, I can also still be able to go back to the home page. Okay, any question? Do we get the assignments? Thanks for coming. So in next class, we look at uh, nested routes in the React JS. Sorry, sorry, please. Can you help drop the the link to the JSON site? Okay. JSON place order. That's typical. Dot com. Okay, I will add it under the video on YouTube. Okay. Thank you very much. You're thank welcome. you. All right. Thanks for coming. Good night.